All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com, and we got a really exciting one for you. Ken Yukihiro, he's my hero, and uh, I won't sing the song by the Foo Fighters, but um, Ken Yukihiro brought this exciting deck to Players Tour. Um, was it Nagoya? I think it was Nagoya, uh, and came in second place. And if you're familiar with my content on uh, my Twitch channel or my YouTube, this is essentially just the mono white Saram Auras deck I built, uh, I don't know, a while back. Um, adding a few black cards from Theros Beyond Death. And that's it, which is awesome. So definitely uh, feels cool to have a little bit of my my hands in uh, in the, the creation of this, which is really, really cool. And Ken took the deck, added some black cards over to the finals of the players tour and that's just super awesome so if you're unfamiliar with the deck um saram auras is a synergy based aggro deck um similar to something like affinity but obviously we're playing enchantments instead of artifacts so the key card of course the namesake is saram saram is a 2-2 for 2 it's a legend it says whenever you cast an aura equipment or vehicle spell draw a card so no equipments and no vehicle spells in this deck just auras as a side note, I had Helm of the Gods in my Saram Auras deck, and I'm kind of missing it here a little bit, but whatever. Uh, so if you cast an Aura, you draw a card, and that's just insane. Um, whenever you have a, a card that says, whenever you cast a spell, draw a card, uh, the velocity inherent in that is insane. You just cast spell, draw a card, cast spell, draw a card, cast spell, draw a card. And um, almost all of our Auras cost one. Very, very easy to just kind of go off with Saram. Untap at Saram, play an Aura, draw a card, play an Aura, draw a card, play an Aura, draw a card. Full hand ready to go for next turn and saram helps to overcome the, the downside of auras so obviously an aura like ethereal armor you put it on your creature and then they, then they fatal push it well you just got two for one you lost two cards they lost one card saram helps to offset that because now if they fatal push your creature well yeah you lose the creature in the aura but you drew a card off the aura so now you're card neutral so saram is the 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 whole deck basically saram is the the key behind the deck um however we get a lot of other interesting cards around it so the one drops here are all new um i was playing some of the older ench enchantment creature one drops in uh in my version but there's a few major upgrades here from theros beyond death if you have al seed of life's bounty which is a one one life linker for one life link very very pertinent pertinent important eh, pertinent's kind of a word uh for uh putting your ores onto it because you make this thing into a 10 10 and you gain 10 life in front of every attack so that's really really good al seed also protects your other creatures so you can pay one and protect it so either it's either a vessel or a protector for your other vessels and then hateful idolon a one two lifelink creature same thing lifelink's fantastic hateful idolon says whenever an enchanted creature dies draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it it's sort of like a reverse saram instead of drawing the cards when you play the uh, aura you draw when the creature dies so same thing though Helps to protect you against being two for one with auras. And there's two copies of Favorite Hoplite, kind of just hanging out. It's an extra creature to put auras on. Um, Heroic gets bigger when you target it, prints damage. Uh, just a reasonable card. And the other big addition from Theros Beyond Death and the color black is Aphemia. I call it the Caw Caw Phony on my uh, my stream to annoy everyone because I can't pronounce things right. The Caw Caw Phony, as I like to say. Uh, it's a two one flyer, it's a legend. For only two mana, it's an enchantment creature, so no drawbacks for a two-one flyer. It's pretty good. On your end step, you can exile an enchantment from your graveyard. If you do, you make a two-two. So, Aphemia allows you to go a little wider, um, turn your kind of dead enchantments and creatures into more creatures, which is great. It gives you a little evasion. Um, just a very solid card, honestly. And uh, you can enchant the zombies. You can enchant the Aphemia. Pretty, pretty sweet. So that's the creature base. Uh, Seventeen creatures. And of course, the auras are the core of the deck. Uh, some of the most important ones are Ethereal Armor. It's a one mana aura, plus one plus one for each enchantment you control, and the creature is first strike. So once again, most of our creatures are enchantment creatures, so they get they get to count themselves. So Ethereal Armor on a, hate, a, a hateful Eidolon all by itself is plus two plus two, making it a three four first strike lifelinker for two mana total spent, and it gets exponentially better as you add more auras. So one of the more powerful cards of a deck, First Strike, also makes uh, combat a nightmare for your opponent. It's also All That Glitters, which is uh, a similar card, same thing, plus almost one for each 
enchantment you control. Also counts artifacts. Uh, we don't have any of those, but just a, another ethereal armor here. And um, ethereal armor is so good that playing two mana for it and losing first strike is still okay. Um, other auras, cartouche solidarity, uh, same thing. Plus it was one in first strike. Also gives you other creature, which is nice. So good against edict effects, extra blocker. Um, that's pretty nice. Four copies of the new card, Sentinel's Eyes. This card is deceptively very powerful. Um, plus the most one in Vigilance. It's fine. Obviously good with the big lifelinker. The big thing is, though, that it gives it the escape ability. It allows you to keep casting it over and over and over again from the graveyard. And that's phenomenal. So an aura you don't mind dying and can come back later. Can draw more cards with Saram. It's very cheap. Great card. Uh, two co three copies of Griffspoon. A little evasion. You know, if your opponent's chump blocking your large creature, it's not bad to have a card that comes back and... Uh, Gives it flying. We can play it from the graveyard for four mana. Solid card. And then the only non-aura spell in the deck is Karametra's Blessing, which is um, kind of like a super blossoming defense in this deck. One white, uh, target gets plus two, plus two. And if it's an enchanted creature or an enchantment creature, it also gets hexproof and indestructible. So, opponent plays Supreme Verdict, save your creature. Opponent plays Fatal Push, save your creature. Opponent uh, blocks with a 10-10. Saber creature. So very powerful card, very good effect to have access to, and that's really it. Um mana base is a uh, you know much dual lands, much planes. Just a straightforward, pretty powerful, pretty aggressive deck that attacks on a pretty weird angle. Um we're not using the graveyard, we're not going super wide. Um so we have a fast clock against combo decks, um, still have an interaction against you know control decks, things like that. So pretty sweet. Cyborg is also quite good. Cyborg gives us two copies of Gideon's of the Trials against Wrath of God decks and against the Inverter combo deck. Um, Gideon of the Trials emblem means that it's very hard for the Inverter deck to kill you because they also have to kill Gideon too and deal with your other stuff. And the Gideon can bubble the Inverter over and over again. That's pretty cool. Uh, two Baffling Ends, extra rule spell. Uh, three copies of Apostle of Purifying Light. Uh, Black is one of the best colors in the format. And Fatal Push is really good. So play a pro, pro black creature and make it really big. Um, I doubt that mono black, either aggro or vampires or anything can beat this card. Um, put an ethereal armor on it and then kill your opponent. It's just as simple as that. A uh, few copies of Brain Maggot for the combo decks. This is a um, riff on Mesmeric Fiend or Kite Sail Freebooter. It's also an enchantment creature. Pretty cool. It pumps up your ethereal armors. That's a nice effect. Uh, two Thoughtseize, more extra discard. And then... Uh, Two copies of Deadweight, kind of a cool card with Hateful Eidolon, where if you kill your opponent's creature, you draw a card. Nice little interaction there. And then one Graph Taker's Cage. I guess if you need Graveyard Hate. I don't know. But um, deck super sweet. Again, this is Ken Yukihiro's second place deck from uh, Players Tour Nagoya. And uh, pumped to play it. But first, a word from our sponsor here at CoolStuffInc.com. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. To learn more about this deck, click the link in the video's description below to read Jim's article. All right, let's go here for round one of uh, Kenny Kihiro's Saram Auras deck. And um, basic swamp is certainly a little awkward, but I think I'm pretty happy with the Hateful Idol on here. Um, obviously, we have a lot of white cards you want to cast. So if we go turn one Idol on, it's going to be harder to double spell, but... Opponents on the play and mulligan to six. Any dual lands a great draw. We're definitely keeping. Um, and then we'll see what uh, what turns up exactly. Opponent mulligans to five. We'll take it, you know. No complaints here. How our hands are to play out is going to be very dependent on what they do. So. If Light Alon does seem pretty good. Being able to slap auras onto it, you know, with impunity and not worrying about um, getting wrecked by a rule spell is pretty nice. Opponents of a tank here, deciding if they want to go to four cards. <whistles> not a good way to start your match, of course. I want to remind everyone while waiting here that there is a companion article to this video on CoolStuffInc.com. So you can go over there and uh, read the article. Of course, if you're on the on YouTube right now, make sure you hop on over to the, the CoolStuffInc.com proper website and check out the article. And of course, I do a video Monday and an article Friday. And uh, make sure you check that out as well. 
written article full length on Friday, a video article on Monday. Hold Fountain Go. Okay. So looking like blue white control. Um So Teferi is pretty annoying. Um because Teferi gives them the ability to just bounce the Eidolon. We don't get any benefit from that. Uh, but I think we're still gonna lead off on the Eidolon. Um We'll have to decide how deep you want to go as far as pantsing it up. Now they're going to play an opt, so it definitely looks like blue eye control. Opt goes to the bottom. They have the land. Azorius Charm also makes Hateful Eidolon look pretty silly. So, Concealed Courtyard. Wish we drew it last turn. Um, I think I might actually be interested in just playing the Alcid of Life's Bounty and then setting up for next turn to put on some auras. And then we can protect our creature. Um, yeah, I like that. Also could be getting Azorius Charmed here, so it defenses against that. Definitely a matchup we got to be really careful in. You know, can't go too crazy with the auras uh, when our opponent's deck is full of Teferis and Wrath of Gods and Azorius Charms and so on and so forth. So... Let's see what's up here. So we're just going to draw a card of Azorius Charm. So that couple with their five card hand makes you think they might be light on lands. Perhaps not. Okay. All right. So we're going to start pantsing a little bit here. Um... We are concerned with the verdict, but any cards that any any auras on the hateful Eidolon that get destroyed will just come back anyway. Um, I suppose we're concerned with a little uh, absorb action here too, but it's not really the end of the world. Um, I think I would like to start with the cartouche. So if they you know they counter this, cool. If they don't, we might even not play anything else. No, I guess we're gonna we're gonna armor. Okay, so they had I mean, absorb, sabotage, whatever, same thing. So we'll fire in for the attack here. Um, they put a Teferi Hero of Dominaria in the graveyard. Further uh, stated that they might have some land problems here, but again, we get to perfect uh, protect our hateful Eidolon from a Teferi or removal spell with the Life's Bounty, and if they have a Verdict, we still draw a card off the Cartouche, so. Doesn't feel like the, the best matchup for us, in game one at least, but. And now, I think I'm fine just attacking. You could play all the Glitters uh, on the Eidolon. They are, they do have Dig dig Mana up currently, so. You know what, we're going to cast the, uh, the all the Glitters. I think I have a counter spell. So if they get to cast Dig this turn, I'm pretty unhappy about it. So Okay. And now we get a pretty significant swing in here. Okay. So yeah, I'm feeling a uh, a dig through time for sure. But thankfully, they are at six life points, and a Supreme Verdict's not too bad here. So they get to uh, draw two cards off the auras, and yep, there's your dig. So we'll see how this one turns out. Dig is obviously pretty powerful, but only have two cards in hand. Definitely a little lighter on resources than um, they would like. A Wrath here would be a two for one. They would get our Eidolon and our Alcide. Uh, which is fine, and we are technically up two cards on them, because we, we did not mulligan, and they did twice, so. We're a little flush on lands, too, here. Um, don't really have any ways to mitigate flooding in our deck. We're just playing 20 lands. Um, Castle Lockthwain's a little hard to play. 
uh, I was playing the the White Castle in my mono white auras deck because the mana base was obviously a lot simpler. But don't have any of that here. All right, they have selected their date cards. They now have four cards in hand. They draw five cards in hand. And they're going to main phase and opt, which is kind of a good sign. Opt goes bottom. So I'm out of the matchup where um, Helm of the Gods, very, very nice. Helm of the Gods is a one mana equipment, equips for one, and gives a creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. So it's kind of like a an ethereal armor, but it's an equipment, not an enchantment. So if it goes really, really well against uh, control decks, you can keep moving it around over and over and over again. It doesn't put you all in, you know? I like that card a lot. I'm a little upset it's not in Ken's deck. Okay. That's a really good post wrath card, um, but I'm not really sure what their uh, what their deal is here. I mean, they could have a a settle, I guess, but I can't see us not attacking with everything. So settle's not commonly played in these blade control decks. They have the Azorius charm. Ooh, they could have two Azorius charms. That might, that might punish us for um. Not playing the second all seed. Mm. Name pro blue, because naming pro white would be really bad. All of our stuff would fall off. Alright, resolved. This might just be them hoping we screw up and name pro white. Because they're dead. Alright, cool. Sometimes they mulligan to five and don't got it. Realistically. And now we get to tune our deck to be much, much better against the control deck, which is very nice. Um, we can trim down on our, our, our worst auras and go up on our disruption. So I think we really are excited about Gideon. We're excited about Thoughtseize. We're excited about Brain, Mag Brain Maggot. I would say we're not excited about um, Griff Spoon. Not very exciting. We don't really need the evasion here. It's kind of a low powered card. And then Sentinel's Eyes is pretty good. The fact that you get to keep using it's pretty nice. Um, Cartridge, Cartridge Solidarity is like, the extra creature is kind of cool too. I think that like all the glitters is one of the less exciting cards. We're not really trying to go like super big on one creature. It's a little clunky. Um, I'll see if we can shave like a Sentinel's Eyes and... Maybe shave two Sentinel's Eyes. You know, the little creature boosts don't matter that much because we're not fighting their creatures. They just have Wraths and Teferis and stuff. So um, we're not like super, you know, we, we're going to be more like, like we were that game, kind of like building up a, you know, a 5-5, five, five, protecting it, not trying not to go all in. Um, so I think these are the weaker, the weaker ores are definitely what needs to go here. So I think I'm happy here. We added two durable threats and five pieces of hand disruption. So certainly a lot better than we had before. The old brain maggot. It's the enchantment based homage to Mesmeric Fiend. His Miric Fiend was a, a terror back in the day. All right. I mean, this hand's not great. Um, we have three auras, two of which we boarded out, but we drew the other copies of them. Only one creature, and it's like, uh, it's okay, but not really amazing by itself. Um, I think it's hard to mulligan, though. We just have three lands, four spells... We really love a Saram. Saram is very good against them because they can't really remove it. It doesn't get into combat. I want a mulligan. I think the hand's just too weak. I mean, these cards just are pretty mopey. We should have no clock and no disruption. Yeah, I want a mulligan. It's close, but... All right, this hand is definitely better. Uh, we're going to keep this... We're going to ship a land. Uh, we don't need another planes. Looking for a black source, so... Gideon should be pretty good, I would think. Um, 
I mean, we're jamming the Cartouche on the Hoplite on turn two. And if they have Azorius, Strongarm, or Teferi, or basically anything, we're just going to take it and then hopefully jam our Gideon. So that was a good draw if we could cast it. Uh, we cannot currently, but... We could also just not attack this turn to play on Azorius Charm and then attack next turn to set up for Gideon. I don't hate that, actually. That's a really, like, next level play. There's obviously a world where they just don't have Azorius Charm, but by making them wait a turn, they either cast Teferi or cast Azorius Charm in combat, and I get to resolve Gideon. Resolving Gideon is a pretty big game. Um, if I attack here and they Azorius Charm, like... We're just kind of in pretty big trouble. I'm going to sort of say go here. Maybe, maybe I'm a crazy person, but I think resolving Gideon is, is pretty important. Okay. That wasn't bad either, but I'm on the Gideon train this turn. I'm not on the Thought Seas train. Maybe you almost actively want them to Azorius Charm now. Okay. All right, so they're not interested in playing ball. It's fine. So now I think we just cast Thoughtseize. They'll probably counter it, but it's obviously fine. It's doing its job. Definitely not playing Hateful Idol onto a Wrath, so. I guess if they Wrath, they get to play Gideon. Dovin's Veto? Okay. I mean, that is a counter that counters a uh, Gideon, so. And Cycle Sensor. Okay. So interesting, interesting turn. All right, so we're just gonna play the same turn again. Another Gideon. All right, so I've drawn both Gideons. Fire in. Opt. Don't terminus me. JK. I really, really enjoy playing against control decks. It's always fun to try and play around their stuff and kind of make them squirm and like make them not be able to do things when they want to do them. But it's a tight, 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 tight rope to walk because you can't give them too much time. All right, so they opt, they scry of its hop, and they're just aching the damage. So we got to cast Gideon here. Um, now you're at the point where you can't not cast spells, I don't think. We could play the Hateful Idol on and just say go again and then try and get Wrath, draw a card, and then um, play Gideon. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, let's, let's try this. Maybe we should have cast this pre-combat. Because then they would think we were playing more auras. I don't know. I'll just ship it. They have a counter, they have a counter. We have two now, so. All right. Um, don't think there's much value in making an emblem. It's almost zero, so we'll just plus it. All right, I mean, they have to like do something, right? <laughs> and now a rat isn't even good. You know, these sorts of sticky threats will always be good against blue, the blue-white control decks. Sure. So, this kills our creatures. We draw a card off our cartouche. Okay, it's not the, the most exciting card to draw given the current board state, but 
Definitely uh, it could be better. We're gonna make a 4-4. Four, four. And uh, we're just uh, kind of an awkward hand. We just draw the, we have just have the other Gideon and five lands and a pump spell. That doesn't do anything right now. Would love to have had this last turn, you know. Flip the order of the Gideon and the and the Karametris blessing, and we're feeling really good. But now they have like a Teferi, and they can tuck the Gideon. Sure. No, they're plusing. So that does not uh, not seem good for us. Looks like they might have a uh, Azorius charm or something. Oh my god. I I just clicked. Oops. All right. Well, I don't think we're running this game anyway. But I I, I oopsie clicked through my uh my Gideon. Um, as they if they didn't have an answer to Gideon attacking, they would just tuck it. So the fact that they did that means they probably just have us uh, anyway till Sunday. So it is also pretty hard for us to win when we draw six lands. You know, it's, we make a land, I mean, if we were making we make a land drop every uh, turn, turn one through six without drawing extra cards, like without without a Saram in play, it's it's definitely makes things a little difficult for us. Kind of a weird game. They have five cards in hand. Oh my god. Can't really fathom um, basically anything working here. Yeah, so they they had the Azorius Charm anyway, so don't think we're uh, really building towards much here. Eh, maybe. Again, they just also have, also have, also have the ability to uh, to tuck the Gideon at any point if they're like desperate for an answer. Uh, Castle Ardenvale opt. Uh, yeah, we're about to go to the next game. Opt goes top. <whistles> they about to dig. All right. We ain't giving them, we're not giving them the pleasure. No. All right. So tough game there. I mean, we drew seven lands and, uh, I think we played well. I'm happy with most of our choices, but except for the misclick, obviously. That sucks, but all right. Tough game there. Tough game. Need to draw uh, a few more spells. A few more spells. Also, Saram. You know, Saram is the uh, is the next namescape, namesake. Wouldn't mind drawing one of those. Saram is uh, very good against them, especially on the play where they can't counter it. And you can play a Saram and you just have free reign the next turn to do whatever you want, basically. They have very few cards that can remove a Saram from the battlefield without attacking with it. So you can just kind of chill on it. All right, going first. I mean, it is not a good hand. Uh, I don't think we can keep this hand. Yeah, it's not uh not enough going on here. It's four lands, one creature, two kind of mopey auras. All right, that's that is significantly better. Uh now we're definitely gonna keep um I think we should dump the all the glitters. It's, it's like all the glitters are hateful Eidolon. Um but I think I would rather have the creature. And the creature's also Wrath Insurance, too. So let's keep this. Dump all the glitters. Cast Thoughtseize in turn one. Right? I guess there's not much they could do on turn one or two. We just go Eidolon into Saram into Cartouche Thoughtseize. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. 
I'm gonna draw on my cast thoughts in turn one, but let's have like literal like glass casket or something. Um, Saram feels pretty safe. All right, let's open on Thoughtseize. Their hand is Azorius Charm, Dig Through Time, Dovin's Veto, Seal Away, Thassus Intervention. So very, very good hand from our opponent. They have multiple ways to remove a creature without killing it they have a, a counter spell um very very good end seal away hits taps creatures so our our vigilance aura has some uh relevance azoria charm obviously hits anything that attacks um this is a very 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 good end we can't really pick apart any one thing although we can uh set up a brain maggot to take a card here. I think we're gonna. God. I think we're gonna take the Azorius Charm and then we're going to play at Aura and probably not attack. And then next turn we can Brain Maggot the, the Seal Away. They can just counter with the intervention, but I'm not really sure what else to do here. This is a pretty stacked hand. Another cartouche. All right, so we are not going to attack into their seal away. And we're just gonna say go. And amusingly enough, the Vigilance token from the Warrior, um, for the Vigilance token, can attack through seal away, which is kind of cute. All right, they play an island. They now have a counter once you pay two up with the Thassus Intervention. Um, Brain Maggot's not bad either. We're going to start by putting the Cartouche on the Warrior and drawing a card and seeing what happens. Okay. I mean, now we're just going to play Brain Maggot, I guess. It's going to resolve. Their hand is, they've added a Glimmer of Genius. Um, so their hand is good. However, their only piece of interaction is Seal Away. So I think I'm pretty happy just taking Seal Away and getting in here. I mean, they have just three card draw spells and a Dovin's Veto. I'm a little surprised I didn't counter the Brain Maggot, honestly, with the Thassus Intervention. Oh my god. You have five cards. It's hook. Okay. So, right to combat. Attack for five. And we just really want to draw an aura next turn of any kind just to keep the ball rolling. They're going to Thassa's Intervention for one. They're going to cycle Thassa's Intervention, getting minimal, minimal value out of it, which is pretty awesome for us. Play Planes. <laughs> and they drew a Wrath. All right. I mean, it's not the end of the world. We do draw two cards here, but that is pretty sick. Uh, all right. Everything was going pretty good, I'm not going to lie, uh, but that Wrath was pretty clutch. Uh, their hand was pretty bad, and it was almost blank. Just a couple, couple, I mean, it wasn't blank, but it was very slow. And now they have Glimmer up, and we have nothing really going on. We have six lands again, so 
pretty pretty rough one there. Obviously, if they had the wrath in the hand, they'd have taken it. But they have the seal away back in their hand again too, which is uh, it's a card. They're at 11. They get the Glimmer here, and then they get to cast Dig Through Time next turn. I'd say we are a pretty big underdog here, not going to lie. That Wrath is a little too clutch. A little too clutch. All right, they keep one card top, one card bottom with Glimmer. So, they got something they like. And they have seal away, veto, dig, card, card, card. And we have a couple one ones. A couple one ones. Glimmer of Genius. I think they're probably playing Gear Hulk, I would think. What is this? Dream Trawler. Not just for standard, apparently. All right. Well, I would say we're in more trouble. We have drawn an Ethereal Armor, but it is not, uh, not the best Ethereal Armor of all time. I guess we're just playing it. I mean, the problem is they're just going to untap with Seal Away and Veto and Dream Trawler, and I'm not really sure how we're getting through. Like, we get to get in here, but I don't think it matters. They also just get to, if I attack, they just Seal Away our Hoplite. We can't give it Pro White because then the Ethereal Armor will fall off. Not really seeing a... Uh, a ton of ways out here, honestly. Definitely feels like one of our worst matchups. Um, we have not. We think that we've run pretty bad, I think. I mean, we drew pretty badly in game two, and they spiked the wrath in game three, but it does feel like a pretty bad matchup for us. Um, too many of their cards interact uh, very well against us. Can't imagine this, uh, this Dream Trawler hit's not going to end the game. Gain five, draw a card. They have seven cards in hand. Yeah, this game's just over. Opting before damage to get that extra point in off Dream Trawler. Of course, triggers off all draws, not just its own. So, yeah. That's... Uh... It's pretty good. Opt onto the bottom. Thank heaven for small miracles. Teferi Time Raveler. Yikes. Targeting the Opalite. So we're going to protect it from blue and they're going to play Steal Away. Yeah, I mean, all that's fine, I suppose. They do not draw a card off Teferi. So small victories. All right, so pretty tough match there. Um, bad matchup, and a lot of things went wrong. Not a good combination. Not a good combination, but that's okay. All right, let's start round two. All right, round two. Let's go. Yikes. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll mulligan this one. That is significantly better. Alright, so we're going to keep this. We'll ship one of these all the glitters. And uh, 
Let's get this ball rolling pretty quick here. Opponent keeps seven on the draw. Saram is everything. So, traverse for an island. So, our opponent's playing the Salt Eye Delirium deck that Yoel Larson won Players Tour Brussels with. So, we're going to put him to the test here. If I had a third land, I might hold this Saram and wait to try and find a uh, uh, an ability to play Saram and an Aura in the same turn for guaranteed value, but Without a third land, we just got a jam here, I think. Force him to have the fatal push. 40k, I guess. Brutal. All right. Well, Eightful Eidolon, it's all on you, my friend. If they had a push, they probably cast it over the decay, which means it might be in the clear here. I think we just... They were going to play Eidolon and then armor, so if a creature dies, we draw two. Yeah, I kind of like that. And next turn we can kind of just go nuts. 4-5 first strike, like Life Linker. And then next turn we get to armor up the other Eidolon. And if you draw land, also pile all the glitters somewhere. So pretty fast clock. Demanding demanding some answers here. Losing Strom is obviously awkward, but Hateful Eidolon certainly uh, fits the bill a little bit. Jace Viren's Prodigy? Or Vryn's Prodigy? I'm mildly dyslexic, so I always mix things up. All right. Um, they have a push here. It is pretty gross, but I don't think we can afford to not go for it. So ship the cheddar. We're good. And all the way to Trump Blockville. Game. That's more like it. That's what we're looking for, you know? Our opponent's playing actual creatures, not playing all removal spells. You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it. Effectively a turn four kill. They weren't actually dead. They could have chumped, but they were dead. All right, so Salt Eye Delirium. Um, definitely a spot I'm interested in, in Apostle of Purifying Light as a creature that um, should be mostly immune to almost all of their removal. Um, aside from that, Dead weight doesn't kill a ton. Baffling ends. I mean, it's okay, but cards like Corsair of Crufix aren't really uh, worrying me too much. Um, I think Ephemia is pretty good, given that um, the flying is nice. The two twos don't seem amazing. I would say I am not super interested in Griffspoon because we also have the pro black creature. Um, I could also see cutting the favored Hoplite. The removal's not damage based, and it just strictly worse the other one drops, I think. And I think the the Apostle sort of fills that role. Um, I think I'm down with that. So we're a little creature heavy, creature heavier. Um, again, I don't think we really need to, need to to worry about their creatures at all. And yeah. I think that's it. Pawn says, hey Jim, testing a new deck. Just a note, if you ever play me on, on Magic Online, I almost never type in chat. It's not not being rude, just I can't really, uh, you know, talk to one person, you get into a conversation, and we got, I'm usually streaming and recording videos and stuff, so nothing personal, Sal. I love you, I appreciate you uh, knowing who I am and watching my content, but just gotta focus on what I'm doing, you know? Usually I'm streaming for a couple hundred people when I gotta, I gotta focus on them. I can't talk to my opponent too, so. Um, another tough one-lander. I mean, his hand would be pretty good if we had two lands, but it has one land. And one's less than two. So, Mulligan. Oh, his hand's terrible. Oh, boy, his hand's bad. Um, opponent keeps seven again. This hand is just really, really bad. Um, four, any, most four landers are going to be bad, but we have neither neither of our two engine creatures, neither of our good auras. I'm going to go five. I just think his hand's terrible. I mean, this is better. Keep this ship, mana confluence, and planes. 
um, the hand, you know. All right, definitely didn't want to draw the fourth land there. Fourth land is a uh, no good, but the apostles also like. I mean, as a mana sink, it were flooded. Apostles not bad. That was a good draw too. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna attack here. Bluff our Karametra's blessing. Got him. And he'll play Apostle of Purifying Light, which I imagine they can't kill. And then we get to slowly chew away at their graveyard with the Exile a card ability, which will come in handy against the Seda Wayfinder. They hit Vivian Reed and three lens. So eating Vivian is certainly um, useful as far as cutting down Delirium. They could have um, left the, uh, the land in the graveyard and flipped Jace right now, but they seem to have a a push. All right, so unfortunately, they get to flip their Jace before I get to exile a card. That is not ideal. Uh, but fortunately, them's the breaks. Uh, so pretty good hand from our opponent here. Oh boy, yeah. So our five card hand not being terribly kind to us. This deck would murder for uh uh silent clearing, the black white horizon canopy land. Imagine how good this hand would be if these caves of Quelos were uh silent clearings. Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath. So get to eat this bad boy from the graveyard. Feels good. Put in water grape, take two, sacrifice the Euro. And Thought Seize me. You got. It. Yes. So We'll eat that Euro. Thank you. They have Delirium right now, right? Uh, sorcery, Instant Land, Planeswalker, yes. And draw. Oh, man, girl. So basically just try and draw some pants for this uh, Spro Black creature. <laughs> Grizzly Salvage. Okay. Revealing Wayfinder, Salt Eye Charm, Wayfinder, Land, Traverse. All right, so they're going to take uh, the Blooming Marsh and play it immediately. So, Land over Wayfinder is pretty interesting. Um, might be somewhat telling about their hand. So, we're going to target the, the Vivian Reed. And they have instant sorcery, creature, creature, sorcery, instant, instant. So let's target a sorcery, I guess. Goal, we'll try to keep them off of delirium, obviously. They have three cards in hand, and they wanted to land. Very interesting. Any spell. That's a spell. It's definitely a spell. Put the armor on the apostle. Now you have an actual attacker here. He poking away at this Jace. And they're blocking. Sure. Play lands, there you go. They of course can use cards like Abrupt Decay on the auras themselves, or Salt Eye Charm. Uh, but not the creature. I think this thing is pretty safe. Considering we've drawn four spells this game and it's turn six, things could be going worse. Mm 
Nissa who shakes the world. Things are now going worse. Uh, things are now going worse, but... So, Watery Graves now a creature. Plain Islands. Eat Sorcery. Eat... Now they have Creature, Instant, Instant, Creature, Creature, Instant, Land, Land, Land. Uh, I guess we should eat Cubating Spells. Make the Jace worse, I suppose. Alright, uh, Grispoon. <laughs> have I got the card for you? Let me tell you about this card. Alright. It costs a little life, but it'll fix your mana. Uh, I mean, it's where, like, I'm gonna get Jace ultimated here. I think it's like, this is right. Maybe I should have attacked Jace, but Traverse with three card types. Sure. Swamp. They could have Emrakul in their hand. I'm not getting a farce, it's also kind of weird because they've Nissa for double green, but sure. Uh, now we need help to attack, unfortunately. It's the slowest withered wretch of all time. Another old school card reference for y'all. I'm old. Alright. Play magic for a long time. Here we go. Big draw step. Oh, yeah. The good news is, if they, uh, actually we can't attack, so then they just double lock. Oh, we don't. Never mind. It's first strike. Uh, the good news is that if they go for the Jace ultimate, we have our Sentinel's Eyes in the graveyard, which we can start to return, so... That has been a fairly silly game. <laughs> We're on pace to cast uh, Grizzlebrand on turn 8. Alright, we would really, really appreciate a spell. Just say it. Anything. Uh, well, sure. Uh, but we still can't attack. This is plus two. It'll be a five, six. Yeah, that doesn't really actually help us. So we attack, they block with all three, and we lose our creature. So we actually just have to say go here. And... Live to fight another day. <laughs> they have block with all three. First, I could kill one. The other two would kill the uh, the apostle. Probably one of like the least exciting games of Magic I've played in a long time. But. We have spent about 26 mana to exile their graveyards. They got no graveyard to speak of. That's a good draw. That was a really good draw. So now you got seven to work with. Um, I mean, killing Jace, you can't even kill a Jace though. If they want to ultimate Jace, it would take a lot of spells to kill us. It's Jace Emblem Mills five cards for each spell. I'm pretty sure we should be attacking the Nissa here, because we're actually just going to lose these three threes eventually. And then if they want to ultimate Jace, we just try and kill him in the air in a few turns, so. Alright. I mean. <laughs> Protection's a fun mechanic, you know? Protection's a fun mechanic. 
All right, they're going to go for the emblem. I believe we only have one Sentinel's Eyes left in our deck. Oh, no, we have both. So, Traverse even Walt. You got it. Milling uh, Ethereal Armor, Land, Busting, Busting, All Seed. Getting a land. Get that APM up. All right, untap, draw, cartouche solidarity, not bad. And now they're dead in two turns. Sort of Boggles-esque. Oh, we got a, a Decay targeting the Ethereal Armor, taking it down a few notches. It's going to take it down to a... Uh, a 6-4, which is still good, not as good, but makes me wish I killed the Jace, because the Jace will now be shrinking this to a 4-4. Four four. We'll see what we draw, though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, they're way off casting Emrakul, so... No fear there. If 35 cards left. Oh, yeah, there it is. Let's go. 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, I'm just going for them. <laughs> just a ridiculous board state. Just absolutely ridiculous. Cast down targeting my warrior. Uh, sure. They got a mill 29 cards. All right. That's, uh, and I got a mill 24 cards. So they can cast four spells or stop my creature. They will live. Fatal push, targeting a swamp. That is their last card in that. And that's the game. <laughs> if that's not your favorite game Magic you've watched in the last six months, I don't know what to tell you. Because that game was ridiculous. Oh my god. And they thought bringing back protection would be a good idea. Oh. Leave a note in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on protection as a mechanic. Um, I don't mind it on things like All Seed of Life's Bounty, where it's a, a one-shot deal. But I think just protection on a creature, even one this simple, you know, just 2-1 for 2, is just, it's just so obnoxious. <laughs> like, our poor opponent just, just staring at this stupid 2-1 they can't kill. Oh, man. Just coast to coast, couple crappy auras. They've got Planeswalker Ultimates and untouched Planeswalkers for multiple turns. Just doesn't matter. Uh, opponent. Alright, round number three. And I must say, Hateful Eidolon does seem really good in this deck. Uh, major upgrade over the previous creatures I was playing in my old version. Uh, this hand's like kind of Moby. We're just going to keep it. This Hateful Eidolon just seems awesome. Choke to Statuary, Watery Grave, Thoughtseize. The terror of the format in the Demir Inverter deck. Let's see how we do. They have a lot of interaction, and they have a combo finish. Um, which could be tough. Hateful Idol would have been really good, but... All right. Opponent agrees. Opponent agrees. Hateful Idol? No. 
Not bad, though. Not bad. Um, definitely makes life a little easier having a second creature. So we get to play another Life's Bounty next turn and start setting up for protection. Unless... Opt. Not a problem. Opt goes top, water grave goes tapped. Okay. Well, they have no mass removal, so we shove in. Hopefully, they aren't playing main deck Legion's End. Definitely an amusing side effect that the Inverter of Truths is colorless as it is an Eldrazi, so we can't push through it with our Alcide. Usually you can use Alcide to give pro, you know, green or whatever to push through a bunch of blockers, but that is not the case here. They have a Thought Erasure, so that's kind of bad. So we were leaning, leaning on this All the Glitters pretty well to uh, pump things up, but let's draw a Thier Lummer. No land, though, but they kept the card with their Surveil, so probably a land on top. A Thier Lummer? Cartouche. Not the worst. I mean... I guess we're looking to spread it out. Um, the flying, nah, let's put it on this. They, they, they could play the 1-3. So, not like the best draw here, but it's okay. We are beating down. You know, it's not, they're meager beats, but they're, they're beats nonetheless. A lot of big draws here. Any of the ethereal armors or all the glitters are pretty good. There's your Oracle. Good choice uh, putting that there. The Oracle does stem the uh, the bleeding here a little bit. Now, they'll put a card on top and they'll play a land. So the land was the, the card they drew this turn because they topped it with Thought Erasure. Now they have the Oracle also. So, one Ethereal Armor, please. Close enough. So now, I would say we are cooking with gas. Um. An attack here puts them to three. This puts them to two, puts them to one. So I could attack with, with I could attack with everything. I would throw away an all seed of life's bounty to put them to nine, eight, or nine, and I'll put them to one hit point. And then if they cast the inverter of truths, I still kill them. If they have two kill spells, that punishes us for not having two all seeds. We only have one mana up anyway, so I'll just ship it. They block an L seed, they take damage and go down to one life. So now we beat an inverter, we beat a single removal spell. I'm not sure what they could do here to uh to wiggle their way out of this. Aside from having like two fatal pushes, but if they had that, they would have cast those earlier. So sweet. A little scoop leg. A little scoop leg. Ooh, whoo. you're drawing pretty good. All right, so we're going to want the pro black creatures. Absolutely, it's not even close. Gideon of Trials is quite good here, too. I just want a lot of things. She's the, the Brain Maggots and the Thought Seizes, probably. That's a lot of cards. Um, I would say that definitely less interested in some of the combat -y auras. So once again, uh, Griff Spoon, not really needed. Um, I would say Cartouche of Solidarity is probably up there on excitingness. Um, Karametra's Blessing seems less interesting because we just don't need the protection. We have a pro black creature now. Um, I don't mind like shaving one or two of those. And then Sentinel Eyes and, and Cartouche need to come off in some numbers. Um, definitely want to keep some number of Sentinel's Eyes because they are good to keep casting them. But... They're bringing a lot of two-drop creatures. Maybe cutting some Ephemias is reasonable, but it's pretty good, too. Cutting all the glitters. Yeah. I think cutting all the glitters is pretty nice, actually. Because um, it's just the clunkiest card. We don't really need to go huge on one creature. 
and it's a card that gets blown out the easiest. It is very good on the pro black creature, but so is everything else. Now, you know, what? I want to keep two. So we have five of that total effect. We'll cut a, we'll cut a Sentinel's Eye. I think Cartouche making an extra body. I guess a body is blocked by the thing. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. It's like six of one, half a dozen of the other, it feels like. But our curve is up a little bit. We shall see. And the Pearl Black Beecher is just like, it's just so good. I almost want the fourth one. Looking at how these matches are playing out. Like, the pro black creature is just so good. It's silly. Again, Inverter can block it, but... Okay. Um, this feels like a pretty easy keep, even though it's, like, not great. We just have Apostle and Gideon. So... They have a Thoughtseize. We have two good cards to take, at least. They have two Thoughtseizes, we're screwed. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Usually on the draw against two Thoughtseizes, you're, you know... Whatever. They're going to main phase and opt. A little F6 value here off this foil guru land. Mm -hmm. They scribe if it's hopped on the, the top on their opt. So no thought seize, please. Thought erasure, thought seize. Uh-oh. Oh, I hate to see. You hate to see it. You really do. Given that all of the Fatal Push decks also play Thought Seize, I think playing playing four Apostles is like pretty easy. We can't tell if they were thinking about it or just reading the card and getting angry. Thought Seize bug? No. Fortunately, auras aren't very good with Gideon and Trials, <laughs> but, oh my god, oh, this hand's panned out horribly for us. Just a disaster. Brain Maggot? That's not bad. With the Blessing to protect it? Could be worse. Could be worse. They have four cards left. When a thought sees me, I'll brain mag at you. Alright, so obviously you protect it. So now they have three cards left, and we're about to see all of them. Ooh, their hand's really good. We're in trouble. <laughs> Uh, we're taking the push, obviously, because the push can kill the maggot anyway. So they have a Jace and an Oracle. So they have a lot of gas. And uh, Jace, while obviously one of their win conditions, is also just a Planeswalker if it draws cards. So, all right, they don't have a land. So they play Oracle. And if we draw, like, a way to protect this or something they uh, they, they do put a card on top so oracle looks if it's up x cards and you can put a card on top so it's sort of like scrying and you know they kept the card so that's not ideal but i don't think there's really a a play here besides shoving like this maggot dies we're probably gonna lose anyway so just shove there's no salty here i guess they know we have confluence we just told them we don't have anything but That's Zorkle is a really good combo card because it it's very relevant. It is a uh, a good blocker, good scryer. All right, so there's your Jace. Mills two cards. Languish. That card is good against us. Well, I know we have that one, so... I mean... Take a pot shot at Jace here. Means we can kill it next turn. Don't think going for them is reasonable. They're way too high.
Mill Land Brazen Borrower. All right. Fortunately, they have a murderous cut and a Jace and a Jace and an Oracle. All right, we are we are dead this game. Uh, Double Thought Seize does us in. No good. No good. I mean, we sideboarded in a manner where we have all of our creatures in. I guess I cut the two heroic creatures, but we are, uh, you know, we're ready to go as far as threats. We just need to draw them and not have the thought seize, I suppose. So that's okay. Run it back. Run it back. And we have 21 creatures now, plus two Gideons, whereas the main deck only has 17. So we have a lot of threats, you know. Just got to uh, draw them and not get them thought seized. Um, okay. This hand is fine, if a little bit unexciting. Um... Aphemia so far has not really impressed me too much. I mean, we haven't even really drawn it or played it or anything, but just in, in principle, just not seeing how a couple random 2-2s two really matter that much. Choked Statuary. Islands. Thoughts these. You can have it. Of course, the second creature is very good because the, the all seed has to protect something, so by itself the all seed is not very good. Uh, so a second creature would be nice here. That is a creature. Um, we're just going to cast it. It's not really worth trying to protect it. So, oh boy, their hand's bad. Okay. Um, we'll take this Legion's End and... The rand is four lands and an opt. So if we get to untap, I am feeling pretty damn good. Should make a monstrous brain maggot next turn. So let's hope this opt is not kind to them. If it finds a fatal push, we are probably going to lose. Opt went bottom. That's a good sign. Untapping, that's a good sign. Another Brain Maggot. Probably not even necessary, because they have so many spell lands in their hand. Uh, we're going to play this in Shock and fire up the uh, the All the Glitters first, because it's uh, the more clunky card. And coming in. This is going to compound pretty quickly next turn when I cast the Ethereal Armor. We draw a land, we play, we play, we play Maggot and Armor. If we don't draw a land, we draw spells. So great. Um, so, 4, 8, 9, 10. It's not lethal next turn, but another opt. Okay. Bottom again. We like it. Fetid Pools tapped. That's kind of weird. Because they already have two lands in their hand. And I would think they would want to cycle. If they had an empty gas. So them wanting their fifth land in this spot's a little weird. Um Okay. It feels like they have a fatal push. Um In which case, I think I like playing Brain Maggot pre-combat. They'll cast push on our maggot. We protect it. The maggot gets whatever other cards they have in their hand. And then next turn we hope to armor for the kill. Um, so if I go for armor and protect it, we're only going to have a 7-7. Seven, seven, and then it just dies next turn. So let's open on maggot. It's obviously a weird thing to say without context, but... Okay, they're letting it happen. Okay, so their hand is 
Hero's Downfall, Inverter of Truth, Inverter of Truth. So again, like I said, it's kind of awkward that we can't um, protect our way through the Inverter, but it's definitely Hero's Downfall because it's have redundant cards. So their hand is Inverter, Inverter, Island, Island. And now, I just killed him. Uh, armor is plus one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're exactly dead, right? Double check, double check. Uh, play the armor. Armor is plus five, and this is plus five. It's 10, 11, 12. Yep, they're dead. Cool. I guess putting it on the, the LC would have gained us life, but I suppose we don't really need the life. Can't really take it with us, you know? Cool. That felt pretty good. Um, we'll take it. Take it. Two and one. All right. Round number four. Another one land mana confluence and. Uh, I can't keep this one. We also haven't played Saram that much. It's actually a pretty good sign that we're winning and not playing Saram, because Saram's best card in the deck by a lot. So we're going to mulligan. We're also mulligan a lot, too. Okay, we're going to keep... Um, we are going to pray our Saram lives, because it's all we got. Opulent Palace. So Sultai, Delirium... I, oh, man. We just cannot help drawing that fourth land, you know? Saram, we really need you here, my friend. Wayfinder reveals Thoughtseize, Blooming Marsh, Passage, Island. They take the Blooming Marsh. We could wait a turn and play Saram and Cartouche in the same turn, but. I don't think that's winning us the game. I think what wins us the game here is them just not having an answer and us untapping and going nuts. So we're just going to fire in. They're also pretty heavy on good threes. So if they have to like cast push this turn and can't develop their board, that helps a little bit. But I think we're just realistically all in here. I mean, it's not as bad as our Saram dying. So the cartouche, not the all the glitters. That's interesting. All right, so they just have everything and we have nothing. Yeah, all right. I mean, pretty rough mulligan. Theater Wayfinder, not a bad magic card. Not a bad magic card. All right, there's your Euro. Euro, also not a bad magic card. <laughs> oh boy. Still have four cards in hand. I mean, they can just Euro this turn. And then uh, if they have any piece of interaction at all, we each can't ever win. Come on, Ominous Otter. Put us away here. So we can go to game two and crush you. Oh, thoughts he's sure. You can have it. I don't even want it. All that glitters is gold. Uh, 
think the tri lands are a little underplayed in Pioneer. I think they're definitely uh, a lot more playable than they look. We're spoiled by fetch land mana bases. I think one of the coolest things about Pioneer is that fetch lands are not legal, and you have to make you have to make choices in your mana base that amount to things like I want to play Opulent Palace in my deck, and that's great. Traverse the Uvenwald for. I feel like playing Euro that turn. See, oh, they have a, they have a passage. That's kind of interesting. They want to burn Traverse just to get a land. Okay. There's a Euro. And uh, we have to draw basically exactly Saram next turn. And then chain together a pretty sick run of, uh, of auras to have a chance to win this game. Here we go. Not quite. Not quite. Now we've had some pretty bad draws. <laughs> Alright. We're good. No worries. We got our pro black creatures. We are good to go. So, uh, apostles are in. And. I don't think we want much else. Like. I just played the matchup enough. I forgot, I forgot how I poured it. <laughs> it was literally like 30 minutes ago. Um, I don't think I want Thoughtseize. I don't want Brain Magnet, I don't think either. Um, I guess Thoughtseize plays. I'm not like thrilled about it. Brain Magnet's just too fragile, I think. Um, want to cut some of the combat oriented auras. Maybe Shave a Sentinel's Eyes. Uh, shave and all the glitters, and I don't love the hoplites. I just don't like the hoplites very much at all, honestly. They are a creature, but like, it's not really big on them. Uh, maybe we should keep this, something like this. Um, the vigilance is kind of nice on Sentinel's eyes, but I think flying on the boon is better. Karametra's Blessing is maybe not... Maybe we keep the Aura to the Blessing. Let's try this. Honestly, not exactly sure. Just need to, uh, you know, just get a, get an Apostle going. Feel pretty good about things. I was playing a Danto Vanguard in my original version of the Mono White Saram Auras. Um, serves a very similar similar role to the Apostle in post board games. You want a creature that wouldn't die. Hey, it sounds fine. Can definitely go for this one. They have a thought they'll nab my Apostle, but I have a one drop at least too, so definitely opening on Hateful Eidolon. I think it's tough for them to cast Thoughtseize on turn one also. Their mana base is not nearly as clean as like Demir or Mono Black. Okay. All right, well, we have Apostle Purifying Light and we have some pants. And uh, the pants will go on the Apostle and we'll call it a day. Obviously they can block it with green creatures, but we're not gonna let that happen. Chase Vryn's Prodigy. Land. So I'm pretty sure we're just going nuts here. Um, I think I'd like to play the All Seed also. I don't think playing the Griff Spoon is necessary yet. And we're just going all in on the Apostle. We're not going to get fancy here.
I mean, next turn we have lethal. Yeah, we should leave the next turn. So. Black green, decay the all the glitters. It's not doing anything here, right? No, grizzly salvage? Wow. Um, you might just be dead, my friend. They hit two lands, a push, a euro, a traverse. A pretty good salvage, honestly. They're going to keep the breeding pool and they're going to loot. Now they can flash back the push on something if they would like to, but it's not even that good. It does prevent, does stop lethal next turn, but Chase goes to two. So if they push the Al Seed, it's kind of awkward. Like we kind of want to kill the Jace. All right, so they did that. They pushed the Hate Flight a lot. Wow. All right. Um, so Glitters is plus three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We are one short of killing them. Um. And we are somewhat interested in killing Jace, but not really, honestly. I don't think it matters. Now we can keep Blessing up too, and I don't even know what they keep Blessing and Al Seeds. Yeah, we, we just like we just go all the glitters here. It's like them, and I guess we poke the Jace. I don't want it to, get, to get the point of flashbacking another spell. So we're not gonna kill the Jace though. And we just have Blessing up and Boon next turn, so, and I'll seed up. So, it seems fairly difficult to lose this game. I mean, they might try a Nero here. I mean, this will die to this thing, though, so I don't even know what, uh, what they're working on. Shrink my apostle. You got it. It's a six seven. Okay, so now they get to Euro and try and stay alive, we just kill them, so. Yep. Not a problem. I mean Euro would be chump blocking anyway, so. So they're at nine. Give them the old boon ski. Attack for exactly nine. And that's game. Deck's pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. Deck is pretty sweet. Alright, game three on the play now. On the draw, sorry. Um, yeah, it's fine. It does feel like I feel like the Ephemias aren't super exciting. The Caramatra's Blessings are good. I just don't want to draw more than one of them. And I am missing the Helm of the Gods. Uh, Helm of the Gods was in my original list and that card was really good. I was playing four. I think four might be a little too clunky, but Helm's good. Helm is good. Oh, it's always one lander four, you know? Um I mean we're on the draw. I kinda wanna keep this. We just have like a hateful Eidolon, triple triple one mana aura, our best two two drops, and a perfect land on the draw. Against a Thought Seize removal deck, I'm gonna keep. 
We'd have to, like, basically never draw land for me to be unhappy. Okay. That's bad. It makes the hand a lot worse. Also, part of that was predicated on them, like, not necessarily being able to cast Dotsies in turn one that often, but... But now, if we draw any land, we feel great, so... Like, they might just take the Apostle here, honestly. Yep, alright, cool. If they had taken the one drop, they were still getting scry bugged, so. The problem we're having also is that we keep drawing Saram in the one land hands and no Saram in the four lands hands. The four land hands are actually fine if you have Saram, so you have to just like keep drawing cards and you kind of set up your like turn three Saram, play an aura, draw a card immediately kind of stuff, but definitely doing it backwards. Definitely doing it backwards. Botanical Sanctum, go. So, could be Push, Decay, Grizzly Salvage. We drew a land, which is a a nice one. Definitely not casting an aura into uh, this open mana here. So we'll just play Attack, play another Eidolon, play land, and then hopefully we draw a land and we can go Saram plus Spell. Alright, so they did a decay, sure. I mean that decay hit an Eidolon, not a Saram, which is good. Um Jace Varin's Prodigy. Okay. Overrun Tomb Shock. So Saying they have push. We drew the land. We're gonna go for it. Where's Saram? We're gonna cartouche the Eidolon. If they want to push the Eidolon, we still draw a card, and Saram's alive. Hmm. Okay. Well now I get to swing. Now if they want to push the Saram, we just got value off of it, so. Bluff. Straight bluff. Took two. Just trying to get me to not do it. Can't bluff me. He beat me. Faded man is money. He chick, 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 chick. Well, Otter, now Otter's in a bit of a squeeze here, because if we have to untap, we're going to go pretty wild. Grizzly Salvage has been guessed. Reeling Wayfinder, Land, Land, Euro, Thoughtsy. So very good salvage. Um, no push, though, which is the big one. So they can't flip and and, uh, and push. They discard a Tyler's Tracker. Um... They can go land decay to kill my Saram, but now we're like actually pretty ahead on the board. So you can start just dumping stuff. Opulent Palace, okay. Interesting. I guess they didn't have a land they could play untapped that can cast the decay off of the Jace. Definitely um, a little clunky here. Assault Light deck is powerful, but it is a little slow. It is a little slow for sure. There should have a plus on the Hateful Eidolon. Wow. So now we get to do many, many things. Um, I would like to make the Hateful Eidolon a threat by playing Ethereal Armor. They know we have these two cards. And I would like to play a bunch of other stuff too. 
Um, if we we can kill the Jace if we all seed. It's probably just all seed Ethereal, Ethereal Armor. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Let's kill Jace. Attack for one. We're like pretty well set up for next turn. Once again, we're at a spot where like if we untap, we just kind of go nuts. Um, we have probably lethal next turn. I haven't done the math yet, but it's definitely lethal. Is the Euro but the best they can do? Looks like a Euro, and they dead. Don't they know we have, Griff have, have the boot in our hand? I'm spoiled by Arena letting me know what cards they know about with the little eyeball symbol. Alright. That's a Euro. And that's the game. Is it the game? It's not actually the game. H. Uh, yeah, it's close to the game. It's not actually the game, though. F first try flying. I think so we're going to Cartouche. We've drawn armor, they're dead. But I guess they'll be dead in two turns. Another Al Seed. Alright. Alright, just send in the uh the clown here. And if they can produce like double removal spell. Let me just draw four cards, so this Little Titan here thinks he's big. It's pretty funny. It's kind of cute. That's game. Okay. This deck's actually kind of gas. Um, Hateful Eidolon is really, really nice. And All Seed's been really good, too. Um, honestly, a lot of the lore of the deck is just Apostle of Purifying Light. Um, just having this, like, insanely good cyborg card against um, all of the various Thoughtseize Fatal Push decks just seems awesome. It's, like, a really cool feature, you know? Would like to actually draw Femia and see how good it is. So far it's been We haven't actually played it, but at no point have I been like, man, I just wish I would draw an Ephemia. Dang Confidant? God, that's a good name. Alright, um This sand's pretty great. I'm gonna keep this one. So I just love one mana spells, you know? It's one of the things I love most in Magic. Just one mana spells. Point of Mulligan 6. Alright. Hateful Eidolon. Go get him, buddy. The next turn we have choices to make, but our choices are very predicated on what they're going to do. So, if you want to play slow, play fast. Blooming Marsh, go. Okay. So, I think I want to play... We could armor and protect with Blessing. We could just play an All Seed. We're going to wait a turn. Just stack for one, play All Seed, say go. You can play two All Seeds, honestly. It's like, at this point, like, what are we protecting? Alright, say so they they had to push. This is fine. So we play that, play this, play another one of these. As long as we have that second creature to protect, you know? And now we have the blessing too, so. Another Salt Eye Delirium deck. That's actually really popular. Jeez. Ooh. It doesn't even seem good. 
I mean, I guess we play it. I'm going to attack. I'm feeling like dang confident on my block here. Just an inkling I've got. Yeah. We're going to take this trade. And then we're going to Ephemia. And we get to exile a enchantment and make a 2-2. Two -two. That wasn't bad. Not a bad turn. Be cool if the zombies were like enchantment zombies. That would make me much more excited about things, but ooh, this is great. Alright, Femia's pretty good there. That's pretty good. I think it's untapped with protection. Oh, that's dirty. Um, yeah. Let's draw land off this uh, armor. So I kind of put the armor on not Ephemia, even though I would like to have the flyer be what's big. The protection aspect makes me... Hmm. Put it on an all seed. It's going to be a 5-5. Five five. We need to draw another aura or enchantment to get, to get through the euro. I can't even euro. I have my bumper to put it here. I think the flyer is more important. I want to go all in on the flyer. All right. Raw. Take a million. See, no enchantment in the graveyard. I feel like there's too many Ephemias. I think like one or two is fine, but I think we're just playing way too many. Another Euro? Euro is good, but it is slow. If he gets on tap here, I'm pretty sure we can't lose. Um, yeah. Too many things that must be killed. Oh my god. Please, somebody stop me. Hammer, don't hurt him. Okay. So, Femi was good there. I mean, it wasn't great. It was good the first turn it came into play, but the 2 2 didn't really matter that much. So, yeah, I'm a little like, a little like lukewarm on Ephemia. It's a powerful card, but the thing is that the 2 2s just don't seem to be super impactful. Um, that was the problem I had playing this card in standard was that the, I played this card in the Black Saga that makes 2 2s and like, I was able to make a few 2-2 two -two zombies, but they just weren't really affecting the game in any way, you know? All right, um, we're going to cut, what, two Hopolite and a Blessings that we were doing, right? Yeah, it's fun. I see you playing, like, one Rest in Peace on the board. I don't think I'd ever want more than one, but it seems better than Graph Digger's Cage. I mean, Cage is for, like, company and stuff, too, but... I don't know if you need more stuff against this deck, realistically. Okay. This is... It's better. It's a little awkward with no one drop, but we can definitely keep it. Okay, no thought sees. Okay. Just a little, little... A little easy start here. No, uh, you know, no, nothing too crazy. Just some tap lands. Chase is good. All seed. All seed is definitely interesting. This all seed can obviously protect our, our Saram next turn. That requires us to leave up mana again and not use it. We could just play Ephemia here and then next turn Saram. But then the problem is that the, Playing Griffspoon on Ephemia is not very good. Um, definitely can't jam Saram. Uh, jamming Ephemia, that's what I was going to do. But I can't just play the Alcide. Obviously, it sucks to have drawn it this turn and not have it last turn, but...
That's pretty good. Earn two Jace, turn three Wayfinder, flip, and hit a Euro. All right, that is that is pretty uh pretty significant. Mm. They chose to put all four cards in the bin. So they want to flip this Jace right now. Which honestly isn't that bad for us. It's just card disadvantage, so. And then they get to play land Thoughtseize as they want to. Which I suppose is fine. It's not the best thing that's ever happened to us, but it could be worse. Definitely takes Saram here, I would assume. And then we get to Griff Spoon, the I'll see you to kill the Jace. If they didn't have the Euro also, I wouldn't be too sad about this, but the Euro is a pretty big, uh, pretty big prize here. Pretty sure we're just leaving up the Blessing. Not super excited about like going big on this all seed. It's obviously like the protection creature, not the it's the creature we want to use to protect things, not the creature we want to protect, but Traverse for two. No problem. Oh nope. Rebel. Sure. Sure. They have four cards in hand. We draw Saram. That's an interesting one. Um, we can't get any immediate value off of it. Like, I kind of want all the glitters the, the I'll see, but I also kind of don't. Um, and I'm definitely filling our removal spell here. I think we just slam and play the Ephemia. We also can't protect the Saram. Let's go to sack our all seed, which is pretty pretty silly, so. Play the caw caw phony. Right, so they're gonna play their Euro. No, yes, maybe. No. Yes. Euro is good. Euro is definitely very good. It's not a card you want to let, let attack us. Once Euro starts attacking, the game starts to slip away for sure. Um, I feel like we're one. I honestly don't mind drawing a land next turn. They're also a little flooded too, which is good. Land or Ethereal Armor? Hateful Eidolon. I think we're not playing Saram. I just want to keep Blessing up. I don't want to play all the Glitters. I want to Pressure. Pressure is everything. So... Alright, they're f 6 so... This is a pretty significant attack phase. We're certainly threatening more than they can gain. And they have no graveyards. They can't, like, Ashkana us something. Like, technically, we have lethal next turn if we want to use the Blessing offensively, but probably don't want to do that. Castle Garenbrig? Sure. So we take six. Not a problem. Their hand is Forest and four other cards. They get a Euro again, sure. Now they're at 14. Play the Forest.
Grizzly Salvage. They are going deep. Uh, no lands, but Tracker, Wayfinder, Euro. They take the... The Euro. They're going to Euro again. Okay. Never not. Untap. Draw. Another Alcide of Life's Bounty. That's actually not bad. Just like another protection spell. We're just like never going to cast a Saram, I guess. Huh. It's a little Salt Eye Charm action to destroy my... Destroy my all the glitters. It's actually pretty good. Uh, all right. So we can't protect that. Um, not get a zombie though. All right. I guess we're gonna ship. And boy, now you can play Saram. We have double protection, and we get a zombie. So we should draw an ore next turn, basically. Um, engine's pretty online here. Nothing we have is too singularly important. I think it's a Euro again. Euro's good, obviously, but... New Euro? Okay, so they're defensively escaping a Euro. So they want to have it back to block. It's a little weird, I guess, but I mean, you still draw three and stuff. Ipnu Rivulet. That's kind of guess. It's good against the uh, inverter deck. It's a way to, like, get their deck before they uh, combo. You know, they invert back two cards, you just, just get them. All right. Um... Vivian Reed. Okay. With two mana up. And they're going to destroy my All Seed with Griff's Boon on it. I think that's fine. So I'm, this this feels like they have a... Uh, like they have a... Um, our rule spell behind. So this is fine. Draw a card off our thingy. <laughs> Hateful idol arm. Um, where do we even want to start? Um, it's definitely going on the Ephemia. You just start there, I guess. We have double protection. All right, we didn't draw. Didn't draw an ore, unfortunately, but I think I'm pretty happy with all of this. We do want to kill the um the Vivian Reed for sure. I guess we're attacking Vivian. I don't think putting the, the Ethereal Armor anywhere else is correct. They have a jump blocker, so this is fine. I think we're like pretty far ahead right now. Um, let's kill the Vivian. We're not really doing much else, so. I want to play the land so we have more mana for Grispoon. Um, just say go. Exile the Alcide, make it a 2 2. We have double protection up. Feels pretty good, so I suppose like Emercool or something like that would be a pretty big problem, but what are we gonna do? 
We get it. Lots of euros. Lots of euros. <laughs> okay. Got it. Yes. All right. Just please draw an ore next turn. That's where, really where we're at. I have an idea. How about, hear me out, another Euro. I actually don't mind this because this turns off Delirium for them. So now that they're, uh, if they have Ashkana or Traverses and stuff like that, sure. Any Aura. That's an Aura. Um, this is going on the uh, the Femia. We're going uh, big pants now. Okay. So we could bring back the Griff Spoon onto something, but that would take down our double all, our double protection, which I don't think is worth it. Um, sorcery speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just play land. Just stack Femia. Now you have a 9-8 First Strike Vigilance, which is uh, very nice because now their Euro can't attack safely. Uh-oh. I think they have Emrakul. So we need to draw... Um, we need to draw, I don't know, we can draw. I guess, I, mean, I don't know what they can do with this, it's profitable. Same with sacking this. Just make this constraints or mana for a turn. Plus two, plus two. They can like pump their creature. I mean, they're, we're going to lose the Saram and the Ephemia. I guess I just cast this. Yeah, all right. Creature enchantment you control against protection. They can use this to make my things fall off. I guess I should have sacrificed this too. All right, well, they get to take my turn. Draw a Cartouche of Solidarity. So, luckily that's a enchant creature you control. When the Ephemia dies, I will draw four cards. So, we're probably dead here, uh, but... That's a bold attack. <laughs> Yeah, I guess them like naturally drawing Emrakul is a problem. I don't know if we could have played this game more aggressively or not. Like, I mean, we were doing pretty good, but. Oh, they have the push I've been holding forever, too. That sucks. Now we only draw two cards. Oh boy. They get to put in all his glitters on their Emrakul.
Pretty funny that the Castle Garenberg, which seemed totally irrelevant, actually ended up mattering because they needed the extra mana for Emrakul because they had no graveyard. So... <laughs> Alright, so we're dead. Um... That's kind of a tough one. I feel like we were definitely doing well that game. They just had to like naturally draw Emrakul and all the lands to cast it. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The old Emrakul. All right, let's run the play now. Definitely feeling pretty good. The game was pretty good that game too. I mean, the the early the early it was like a turn four euro, I think, um, and we didn't have the attacking force early enough, and they gained like probably twenty one life or something off all the euros, which bought them enough time. Um, again, like we they were off delirium, so like. I mean, I don't think we, think we, think we could play around Emrakul anyway, but, it's, you know, we can't really put them on just having that. All right, going first. Ew. This is a occupational hazard of playing the deck. Uh, this is a significant improvement. What do we ship? It's probably Kalkoff, Oni. Ephemia. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just the worst card, I think. We want the one drops, we want the Saram, we want the Aura. Plus, opponent also Mulligan's six, which I think favors us. We have two of our engine cards. We've got uh, a protection card, an Aura. Fatal push, hateful hour. All right. So now the question is do we run out the Saram or not? Uh, no, we're going to play the Hateful Idol on it, I think. The real goal is to play Saram and Aura in the same turn, um, which I would like to do. It's a lot of fatal pushes. Draw. Excellent. I mean, we can't protect the Saram and play the Aura, but they just burned two fatal pushes, so I'm kind of okay just doing this. Make him have it exactly this turn. We could have waited and protected it, maybe. That might have been better. Maybe that was just too greedy. We could have just protected it with the Owl Seed. Ugh, yeah, maybe, maybe I responded. Maybe that was just too greedy. Could have just waited. Yeah, yeah, that was probably wrong. I probably just got a little too frisky. Like, yeah, they had two kill spells. They could have, you know, are they going to have a third? But, like, why not just wait? Protect the thing with the thing. Like, obviously their hand's good, but, like, we could have just played around that. They're shocking, too. Man, their hand's really good. I mean, they bricked on the the Wayfinder, but I don't think that matters. It's, like, not even good. Oh, man. So they have Euro next turn. Hero and three spells? Oh, man. Okay. It's not the worst, I guess. Um, I mean, can't attack, but... One black in the pool, Thoughtseize. Sure. It 
scavenging ooze. I guess I screwed up. Sure, sure, but the creature. Ethereal armor. It's not bad. It's not bad. All right. Um, would I trade my warrior and my all the glitters for a scavenging ooze? I think I would. I mean, we have this as a play it. Um, so they're going to eat my two enchantment creatures. Yeah, I, I didn't even think of scavenging was at all. So we made two pretty bad, pretty bad mistakes this game. Probably going to cost us. What is this? Nissa who shakes the world. Okay. Sure. Man, more spells too, jeez. All right, no blocks. We've seen a big draw here. We should draw an aura and show chains and stuff. Big draw step, big draw step. I guess it's Nissa Nissa, and they're gonna make some blocks probably, and we get to kill. I need to exile two creatures with this, make it a 6-6, six, six, and we still get to kill it with the best thing, so. I guess they have a push here, it's also really bad. Oh, they can't. Oh yeah, let me make a black and a green. All right, so we pump. That deals with the ooze, which is a start, I guess. But we got a ways to go here. Just jump. Um, I'm not really gonna move double block because if we just can draw another aura or two, we can make this warrior a lot bigger. They have a lot of cards in their hand though. We just played bad this game. Then we just threw away our uh, our Saram on turn two for no reason, and uh, it probably just cost us the game. God, if we just draw an aura with these damn blessings. Oh man! Now they get to flip their Jace and flashback a push. Yeah, I think we're playing too many blessings too. Like it just 
the first blessing is great, but you never want to draw more than one. Like if this is just an aura, we could probably chain together and start doing actual useful things. But without it, like, I mean, it just any, an aura is it, it just the the game, the entire game right here is just an aura or not, you know. See if they double again. It's gonna chump with Jace. That's an interesting play. Hmm. And now we're in a spot where like, I need, like, need to like chump block, which really sucks. Traverse. All right, we're just uh, this ever cool. It's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, we're just dead. All right. I mean, that was a tough game. We just threw away game three there. I think we should protect the uh, the Saram. We're fine. Although we still have some deck building problems too here. Like, this is too many blessings. I think, and the Ephemias are they're medium. They're okay, but I'm not like enthralled. Um, but I mean. For a league where we drew, like, pretty badly almost the entire league, I'll take that 3-2. And a 3-2 with a punt that probably could have been a 4-1 if we play a little better. I'll take that, you know. Um, Deck's got some power. Uh, Hateful Adelon's really, really good. Definitely a really good addition. Uh, Femia, medium. Um, favorite Hoplite, it's medium. I definitely missed Helm of the Gods. I think Helm of the Gods is really good. Um... Yeah, a little heavy on blessings. And then I think you want four of these in the sideboard. I don't think it's particularly close. Um, black is just the best color in Pioneer by a lot. So just play the pro black creature. It's really complicated, you know? That's like old school magic, like sleight of hand, slight knight, whatever it was. So, but that's really cool. Uh, definitely cool that Ken played this deck at the player's tour. And um, again, I mean, this is the, the list that I had. Where is it? This is the version that I played pre. I I, I played this deck in a while, but oh, actually, I I did add the the Theros cards to it. I played I played it somewhat recently, um, but clearly, the uh, Hateful Idolon is a big upgrade to Nick's Born Shieldmate, you know. But um, same idea. I think Helm of the Gods is right here. You can see this card. I think this card's really really good. Maybe playing four is a little too many, but this card draws off Saram. It pumps your all the glitters, and then it's just an ethereal. Ethereal armor that doesn't go away when your creature dies. So um my cyborg is bad though. But but yeah, so super cool. King Yuki Hero qu quickly become one of my favorite magic players to watch, always playing cool decks, and I'm happy to bring it here to you. So thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate it. Um I am Jim Davis for CoolStuffInc.com. Again, there's a companion article to this video on CoolStuffInc.com proper. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you go to the website, check out the article. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, also please subscribe to the channel for more great content from Cool Stuff, myself, Ali and Trazi, and other great magic players. And um, the content on CoolStuffInc.com, new stuff every day, articles and videos, always free. No paywall. That's right. Not a dime. Come read the content. Come watch the videos and enjoy. Um, just really great stuff for free. Um, what do you want? F-R-E-E. -E. Free. Also use promo code Jim 5 for stuff that's not free. Uh, the products on the website, of course. Buy your, uh, go buy your Saram Senior Edificers at CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code Jim five five percent off your order. Um, they also have card games and board games and miniatures. Everything's on there. Cool stuff's the best for all gaming needs. So check that out, and I'll I'll see you fine folks uh, next week. I guess Friday for the video for the article. So I love you all. I'll see you soon. I am Jim Davis for CoolStuffInc.com. See you next time.